Hi there, Linda Goodall here for Lindy G Embroidery. In this video, I'll show you how to make a nearly instant embossed monogram using Embrilliant Stitch Artist. I do have all the modules installed, so if your version looks a little different, that's probably why. Also, this is version 1.48, and it's uh, currently it's the preview version. What can I say? I like living on the edge. You won't need any artwork for this because we're going to use a shape that comes built in and we'll pick a font using the Add True Type Font Art feature. So this can be done in Stitch Artist Level 1. Embossed monograms are great on towels or other thick fluffy kinds of fabric like, I don't know, fleece, maybe a really thick sweatshirt. Monograms are the perfect way to emboss an item and this technique is perfect for quick last minute gifts. Embossing works by stitching a mesh grid, which you can see right here, around the letter so the letters actually open and the fabric will kind of puff up in there and then just to make it look better I put a satin border here and then I duplicated the border and kind of spread it out so I'll show you how to do all of this now this letter may not be the best one for this particular technique because you can see how it gets real skinny in here and it's not going to poof up in there so one that's more open is a better choice and we'll look at that in just a moment so let's get started. I'll create a new design and we'll go into Stitch Artist into Create Mode and then I'm going to click on the library and find a shape. Now I happen to found, have found one in the shields and it's number 19. So let's just bring that up. It's that one. So I'll click it, click OK. Now I'm going to hold down the Shift key and enlarge it. So the shift key enlarges it proportionally from the center out so then we don't have to do any moving around. Now we need to select a letter. So I'll click on the true type icon. And you can see well I have Calamity Jane here selected. I have I'm a font junkie what can I say. There are tons of fonts in here. This one is not particularly good because it's really skinny. So I've already kind of pre-selected one to use, and it's Bookman Old Style. And you'll notice that it came up with some choices here. So I can select Bold, and it'll be even fatter. So the thing is that skinny fonts are just not going to poof. Fat fonts will poof. So I'll select that. We need to select our text here. So I'll just swipe over that, type in a G and click OK. Now the font comes in at about an inch. I need to enlarge that, so I'll hold the Shift key down. Oops, wrong key. Shift key. See how the difference in, in sizing works? So now if we look at the objects pane, we have my frame and we have the letter. And What we want to do is get these combined so that when we put our fill on there, it goes right around the object. And to do that, I'm going to do Command A to select all because these are the only things I have on there. I'll go to the Create menu, choose Outline, and then Combine Holes. And now if we look at the Objects pane, you can see that we have one object and they're combined. So the next step is to add our stitches. And I'm just going to choose Freestanding or Quilted Fill and Look how fast that was. Now you want to make sure that it's set to single and not freestanding, which is double. This would be for lace. We don't need that. We could choose a diamond pattern. I think I like this square pattern better. We could change the density. I'm just going to leave it as is. So there's our embossing. It's pretty fast, huh? So now I'm going to copy and paste this. And it doesn't look like anything happened over here, but if you look at this, you can see that we have two objects. So always refer to your objects pane. It'll keep you out of trouble. So with that selected, I'm going to remove stitches. And so on this icon, Artwork with No Stitches, it's going to take our stitch object and turn it back into an artwork object. But it's still combined, so I need to uncombine it. And I'll go to Outline and do Separate Holes. And then we have that. And if we look over here on the Objects pane, there are my two objects. So I'm going to select the Outline, and I'll choose Border, Satin Border, 
and that's a little wider than I want. I want it about 2.5. And let's see, do we need to do anything with the underlay? If we're going to stitch this on a towel, we might want more underlay to permanently hold down the nap and so that it doesn't come back up through our stitching. So I'm going to click parallel. Freestanding would be, once again for lace, and there would just be too much density. And I think since I have all that extra underlay, I am going to lighten up my density a tad. We'll make it 4.5. And so there's that. There's our design so far. Now to get that extra border on there that I had on my other design, all we have to do is select the border, copy, paste, and hold down the shift key and enlarge and there we have that. Now the nice thing about this one is that with our G being really fat we could actually put a satin border on this as well so let's do that. So I'll select my G on my objects pane and go back into Stitch Artist, click on satin border and I want to make this one even thinner. So um, let's make that one two. And I'm going to leave the underlay at the default. And there's my finished design. How, how fast was that? So you do want to test sew it. This border looks a little wider, so let me check that. That says 2.5, and this says 2.5 interesting. Okay, so there's my design. You do want to test sew it. We could watch it sew in the sewing simulator to get an idea of how it works, but you always want to test sew your design on the actual fabric to make sure that it looks like what you intended. It's the right size and, and all that. And when you test sew it, you watch it sew from the beginning to the end. So I think you can see just how easy and quick that was. And if I didn't have to talk you through it, I could have done it in just minutes. And once you've walked through this a couple times, you'll be able to do it in minutes too. In fact, it'll probably take you longer to choose the font than to do the rest of the design. So now all you need to do is save it out and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.